Hello, welcome to my channel. Where are you guys for photography? Today we are inside Sonar Photo Studio X and we are going to deal with this image. Now, what is Sonar Photo Studio X? Well, it's a raw converter, so where you would develop your raw images, but it is also an editor and a lot more actually <laughs> but you can do a ton of stuff inside the uh, sonar photo studio x but today we are going to do uh, a, just a raw develop or process a raw image inside sonar photo studio x and i wanted especially to try and see how it recovers shadows so this image is mostly exposed for the sun uh, so by exposing for the sun, you try to leave details in the brightest area, and in this case, the sun. And the sun is, of course, always <laughs> really bright. But to keep details, to, to not love the sun entirely, you have to expose for it when shooting directly into the sun like I have here. Now, I'm sure it's still clipped, but it's not as bad. If I was to expose entirely for the sun, we would have no details in the darker regions of this image. And recovering details would be entirely hopeless. So that's the reason why you want to sort of expose for the sun, but you don't want to expose for the sun so much that you don't have any details in the shadow black. All right, enough about that. Let's just uh, try the auto button here. Or let's take a look at the presets here. So you have a ton of presets. And the presets are actually pretty good. And you can download more presets from uh, the Sonar Photo Studio X homepage. And most of them, if not all, are actually free. So that's a really nice thing. Now, let's just try the auto button. And we did actually recover some details in the blacks or the shadows. But I would really like to recover more. So let's try for that. And you can see it did boost the shadows quite a lot boosted up to 73 and uh, yeah let's boost it even more up to 90 that didn't do too much actually let's boost just a little bit more and i think that actually isn't all that bad let's uh open the exposure and by <laughs> if i go too high on the exposure i will simply blow the sun again so maybe not but let's drop the lights a bit and go this way and just go slightly up and i think that works now the next thing we could do is uh, we could maybe drop a gradient or we can try and brush in and recover shadows with a brush and that's what we are going to do so i'm hitting the filter brush and you can control the diameter opacity density and the blur and i want the brush to be a bit bigger so i'm holding down the shift key on my keyboard and i'm scrolling upwards with my mouse and i'm just gonna pull up the shadows a bit and yeah, let's start and paint that in. I think I need to pull up the shadows even more. But you can see clearly that it's doing a good job lifting the shadows. And we can even, uh, instead of lifting the shadows or using the shadow sliders, we can actually add some exposure as well. So let's do something like that. And this is... I'm starting to like this. It's a lot better. So let's just paint that carefully in there. And I don't want to paint too much into the water. A little bit is fine, but not too much. 
Let's decrease the size of the brush. And I'm just going to paint in over here as well. And I did bleed out to the sky, but yeah, I'm not going to sit here and paint a perfect uh, mask. Just going to do this a bit quick. A bit quick. Uh, a bit fast, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Over here, I don't really care if that's dark. I just want to have some details leading into what's going on over here and finally into the sunset itself. So we have a leading line here. And uh, of course, leading lines are an effective way to get the viewer to look where you want the viewer to look. Now let's uh, take a look at this mask here. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. Let's just paint into the corner here as well. Okay, let's just play with the shadow slider and I'm just gonna add some contrast back, back here. Something like that. And we can take a look this is without the brush and this is with the brush. So that does a really good job. I'm happy about that. All right, so now we can close this, uh, but let's just have a look at what sort of local uh, adjustments you can do. So in the filter brush, I can even do clarity and uh, saturation and really change a lot there. So I really appreciate uh, the masking tools inside uh, Sonar Fruits Studio X. I think it's uh, pretty excellent actually. All right, so that's uh, the foreground and mid ground. No, I wanna crop this, so let's do that. So he, let's hit this tool and the crop ratio, I think, either a 69 or a 2 by one Let's try the 2 by one And I guess I wanted something like this. Yeah, there we are. I think that's going to work well. Yeah, I think it does. All right, so Let's just drop the overall exposure again, just a little bit to around there. That's fine. Let's add some contrast to something like that. Yeah, that looks nice. Usually I set the white and black point with a curve, uh, but I'm not going to do that this time. But under the tone curve, you have the RGB curve and the tone curve. So the tone curve, you are changing the luminosity without actually changing the intensity of the colors. And the RGB curve, you are also changing the intensity or the tones of the colors themselves. All right, so under here, you have color shift. If we go into advanced, you can see that we can target colors really well inside this software. So if I want to increase the saturation for the blues, I can do so. Just hit the droplet tool here. Click here and hold down the mouse cursor. And I'm just boosting that blues. So I'm increasing the saturation a lot, actually. Now I can also increase the range of the tones I want to pick up. So if I do something like that, we are actually boosting more in the blue range. And I really like that. So we can also try and boost the orange colors over here if we want to do that. So I'm just pulling that up and that's fine. And if we want to target the luminosity for that range, we can do that. So something like that. And we can even change the hue. But I think that's fine. 
Okay, so now we have split toning. Uh, so let's try that. <laughs> split toning is something that can be really powerful for your images. So it's worth trying out the split toning. I'm just going to go more over to the pinkish magenta ish look here. Uh, that's my style. Uh, just find uh, your own style. I like uh, to go more to the pinkish uh, on the sunset. And let's also pull in some color to the shadows. And I'm just going to go for a complementary color for the highlights. And I think that works. Now, I just want to make sure that we are boosting more of the highlights than the shadows. So I'm moving the balance slider up here to something like that. And I think that works. All right. So we are starting to get there, I think. Let's now... I'm just going to remove this one. Let's go in and see if there's a lot of noise. And it's actually not too bad. Uh, there is noise in the area where we lifted the shadows. And that's just the nature of uh, this software or any software. Whenever you lift shadows, uh, you might end up with some noise. And even though this is shot at ISO 100, there are noise here, as you can clearly see. Now, the noise reduction is something I really like inside the uh, uh, Sonar Photo Studio because it allows you to target specific uh, tone ranges or even color ranges. In this case, I think I'm going to target the uh, tone range luminosity range so with the droplet tool clicking out here we can clearly see that it did put a point here and then we can simply pull that point upwards and it will reduce the noise in that uh, luminosity range and it does a really good job and you can extend the range if you want to and of course the intensity of the noise reduction. And I think it did a really good job. Maybe, maybe a bit too much reduction, but let's just leave it at that. And of course you can combine with the slider as well. So let's go out, have a look. And I think that works. Okay, so you can also sharpen your image. I'm not going to do that. I don't think it needs sharpening. And of course, you can also play around with a vignette. And I'm actually going to use a vignette here. I like uh, vignettes. That's just something <laughs> that I do on almost all of my images. But it's a matter of taste. If you don't like vignettes, uh, simply don't use it. All right, add grain. I don't want to add any grain at all. Uh, but if it was a black and white or a portrait, I would maybe add some grain, but not for landscape images. I don't like uh, grainy landscape images, but that's me. All right, I just want to boost the temp just a little bit. Wow, that's not a little bit. That's a lot. Yeah, two around there. And I'm actually going to pull in some more magenta as well. Something like that. And yeah, I think that's it for this image. I would now clean up with removing dust spots, do some dodge and burn, uh, clean up the mask, maybe try to change the hue for the sun into a more red, Tone, we could actually try and do that right away. Whoa, that's a, <laughs> that's a lot. Sort of like that. Yeah. 
All right, I think that's it for this image. If you want to buy or try uh, Sonar Photo Studio X, hit the link in the description. That's an affiliate link. Uh, well, and that will support me if you buy or try Sonar Photo Studio X through that link. Anyway, I think that's it for this video. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If you want to watch more Sonar Photo Studio X videos or any other videos, hit the subscribe button. And thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again. Goodbye.